if I poured you a drink, would you sit down and talk with me? Lend me your ear and I'll bring you along. We can split the day rate 50 50. Oh, baby, I get by. Oh, and all I need is something. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get high. Welcome to the Pro EDU Podcast. Talk and drink with your favorite artist. So grab yourself a cold sarsaparilla, take your pants off, kick back, and enjoy. What about you? I'll take comfort in that. Right. In this episode, I am joined with probably my favorite type of photographer of all time, and that's an animal photographer. Greg Murray, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. All right. So I'm sure everybody asked you, but how did you get started with shooting all of the amazing animals and pets that you have in your portfolio? Yeah, I mean, that could be a really long story. I'll try to like keep it short, but yeah, I got all day. I mean, when it comes down to it, I, I on it, like, and I say this, I just didn't like working with people, <laughs> but it, I, get it. I don't say that in a bad way. It just wasn't my thing. I'll I, say it in a bad way. Yeah. People suck. <laughs> yeah. I don't like telling people what to do. I, I don't like posing people. I just, I like chaos, but, but yeah, I mean, I grew up, um, I grew up loving animals. They were always a big part of my life. Uh, I grew up when I was born, we had a dog in the family. I have pictures of me in the dog kennel laying down with it. I mean, like I was just obsessed with animals. We had lizards, we had birds, we had guinea pigs, we had fish. We had any type of animal you can imagine that you could have as a pet we had growing up. And um, I always had a love for art growing up. Um, my mother just sent me to like loads of art classes here in the Cleveland, Ohio area at a very young age. Um, so yeah, that was like the very beginning. And, um, I went to college, got a business degree, um, spent 10 year, 10 years in, in corporate human resources, working my way up, um, getting promoted, making really good money, um, doing very well, but always in the back of my head, like, I don't know if you've ever had a job like this, but you're just like sitting at a desk in a windowless office. Um, I was solving other people's problems, you know, being in HR and employee relations. And I was just kind of miserable. Um, and so that in 2012, I just decided I wanted to get into photography and I picked up a Canon 60D and started shooting a lot of like, um, landscape here in Cleveland. For those of you who don't know, we have a national park right here. And uh, I spend a lot of time photographing waterfalls and, and just beautiful landscapes that we have here and cityscapes and doing a bunch of um, art shows here in the Cleveland area, selling my artwork and doing pretty well, but still in the HR field. And 2014 came I, 10 years after I started my career in HR. I said, I can't do this anymore. Up and quit my job. Kind of got let go. It was like kind of a little bit of both. <laughs> were, you, were you stealing office supplies? Yeah, yeah. We got to that point where like, let's, I've, let's I, just say I, I wasn't, get, I wasn't work. getting much work done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, my company said, hey, this isn't, it doesn't seem like a good fit. I agreed. I was terrified because now I didn't have a job. And um, my girlfriend at the time and now my wife, Kristen, um, we said, why don't we just give photography? You give photography a uh, a shot, give it six months and see how it goes. And I had already been doing animals here and there. I'd been photographing weddings, which I like 
despised. Again, nothing against like that type of photography. I respect wedding photographers. Um, it just wasn't for me. Um, but yeah, I, I, 2014 came and I, I said, I want to combine my love for photography and animals and I want to become a full-time animal photographer. And it took probably three or four years to be solely focused on animals. I was doing weddings on the side because the money was so good. Um, I was doing headshots for big companies because the money was good. But by 17, 18, I, all I do is animals now. I turn down work all the time because people reach out to me and animals aren't involved. Um, and I, you know, I make a good living. I, I do well. I have books and I license my work. And you know, I'm sure we'll get into a lot of that. But um, that's kind of the long or short story of... <laughs> How that all happened no that's a that's a great story i love hearing when people have a well-paying job but for, for whatever reason they're just it's not fulfilling yeah and then they switch to something that is both scary and probably pays way way less to start out yeah and then they Fair make fine. it work like that is that's the dream and like yeah. to love what you do and to do art for a living and to get paid for it yeah. i mean there's nothing better if that if that's what yeah. you want to do yeah and I, I love what i do there are parts is you probably know when you talk to other people, like there are parts of my job. I don't, I don't, I think people think I have the greatest job in the world. And I, I do, I have a great job. There are parts of it. I still don't like running the business is not always the fun part. You know, being behind the camera is the most fun part. And that's like 5% <laughs> of my work is being behind the camera. But I mean, I, I can't complain. I get to work with animals all day, every day. So, so you must have quite a bit of pets yourself. We just have two dogs, two rescue two. dogs. All right. Uh, Leo and Kenzie. I would love to have more pets. I love I love reptiles. I'd love to have some reptiles. I photographed some chameleons this past week. Coolest looking animal ever. But I have to often just, you know, put on the brakes and two dogs and two little humans at home is enough. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a <laughs> lot. Because dogs are basically like children their whole life. Yeah. And now they, they're getting old and they're, yeah a lot to take care of. All right. So in terms of your clientele, who are they? Are you doing like more on the commercial side where you're working with like agencies? Or are you doing like people are bringing their dogs in or is it a mix of everything? Yeah. A mix of everything. I'd say like 50% of my work is, um, is people hiring me to photograph their pets. The other 50% are companies, marketing agencies that work for companies reaching out to me, um, licensing photos, needing to do, um, shoots for specific products and things like that. Um, I love licensing because whenever someone comes in to do a shoot, they sign, I still have them sign paperwork and a release for their pets. And, and then I get to put those photos out there and sell them. And it's, as you know, it's little to no work, just kind of negotiating price and a few emails back and forth. So licensing is, is one of my favorite things to do. Um, because I already have the photos taken. I've working with, you know, I'm per the contract, I'm not allowed to say who it was, but let's just say it's a gigantic online retailer. If you go to their pet section, for instance, you'll find a lot of my work. Um, so um, yeah, and then editorial stuff. I recently sold some raccoon photos. I had a raccoon in my studio to some newspapers out in, uh, out in Europe. I guess raccoons are becoming a big thing out there now. Um, so yeah, a little bit of everything, but every year that goes by, I, I'd say I decrease the amount of work related to people hiring me. Um, but I also need those people because that's how I license work and stuff like that. So, yeah, I remember, I remember some quote from somewhere saying people spend money on their children and pets. And like, that's number one and number two. So how are you marketing yourselves to the average, you know, person with a pet that wants maybe like a good Christmas photo of the pet? Uh, how are you getting in front of them? Yeah, I mean, I'm lucky. I've always enjoyed working on one of my favorite parts of what I do is my website. I love work. I have like a Squarespace website. I love my website. I love changing it. I love making it look better. I love, believe it or not, I like working and improving my SEO. You know, I tell a lot of photographers out there hire like an SEO consultant because they will SEO is like, huge. It'll get you out there. And I live in Cleveland, Ohio. You know, if I lived in New York or Chicago, 
Um, I might not stick out as much as I do, but Cleveland is, you know, it's a mid-sized city, but everyone kind of knows everyone. And if I have something going on, like a new book coming out or whatever, all the local news channels will have me on. Um, so I'm in the news a lot in Cleveland, which is great. Um, I have a pretty good Instagram, you know, account following 40 plus thousand. Most of those people are in Northeast Ohio. I, um, yeah, I mean, if you search online, Cleveland, Ohio pet photographer, I'm up there. And, um, you know, again, web, my website and my ability to show up has always been a big, important part of, of what I do. And, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta present yourself. If you're comfortable with it, let's get into your SEO strategy. Do you have like a, a monthly amount of stuff you need to publish or do you kind of hand it off to an agency and let them kind of run with it? No, I, I do it myself, but it, it, my SEO strategy is I've actually started to use chat GTP to write SEO for my pages, which I, I think has helped. I, I think my SEO looks a lot better than it used to, but a lot of what I do is just um, naming I think naming my files is one of my biggest thing and uploading yeah. new, new pictures to my portfolio. It's worked for me. You know, I can't speak for everyone and every photographer, but I learned, you know, a couple of years ago in talking with a SEO expert, just naming and uploading new files. A lot of the time, um, I don't do a lot of blog posts, but, um, that's helped quite a lot. Um, uh, and then just having a solid SEO description for each page um, has helped quite a lot. Yeah. With with SEO, definitely like new content. And I love that you said labeling your photos correctly. because I didn't know. I Yeah. It's one of like the, you know, five main things that Google, yeah. Google looks at. So like image, like images that pop up when you search. Yeah. Unless you're labeling the images that are on your website. Google doesn't know what it is. I mean, they exactly. might now with the whole like descriptive, but in the past and probably now, like you have to not only name it correctly, but make sure that you have an alt description of that image as well. So yeah. you almost have to name it twice. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a, and it can be a lot of work sometimes, you know, even simple things of allowing people to pin my photos on my website. So huge, you know, Pinterest, I get people from there. So Facebook. You know, um, but again, I think it helps to live in a city like Cleveland. Everybody kind of knows everybody here. And if you have a dog, you know, I mean, I'm sure anyone with a pet in Cleveland knows someone that's worked with, you know what I mean? Like, and that's helpful, you know? All right. So when, when someone hires you to photograph their, their pet, are they coming in and like telling you what to do? And if so, are you like, Hey, I got this. Just sometimes, sit down. <laughs> sometimes that happens. Sometimes I have to tell people to sit down, but a lot, I don't, unless I'm doing a big commercial shoot or something like that, I don't have an assistant. I like to work by myself. I make the dogs or the animals owners, my assistant. I put, and I let them know ahead of time. I put them to work because their pet is most often most comfortable with them. So I'm not going to, get super involved unless it's easy to do for that specific dog, unless a dog like loves me, which a lot of times they do, but I don't want to insert someone into their face, just all over them that doesn't know them like an assistant might. I make the owner work. I make them like help with sitting and doing certain things. A lot of times the people that bring their pets in are sweating, you know, at the end of the shoot. Um, but it, to me, it makes it, the easiest on all of us, the least stressful when you minimize, I deal with a lot of dogs straight from a, sh I just had a dog in a little bit ago, straight from the shelter, you know, um, and it doesn't have much real world experience in the past couple months. Cause it's been at a shelter, you know? Um, so the people that know those animals, the best need, in my opinion, to be working with them. Yeah. So if the animal was at a shelter, was it a new foster parent or new like parent bringing them in to get photographed or like why yeah were, were in some cases, yeah good question in some cases it, it is i spend a lot of my time i'd say i wish i could do more but maybe once or twice a week i photograph a um a, a animal that needs to be adopted i volunteer my time um i shoot video because a instagram reel tends to i want people to see them interacting with me um and then I maybe try to get one or two good photos. 
Um, and I volunteer my time doing that. And it's really important for me to give back. Um, a lot of those people that work at the shelters are volunteers. They are big supporters of me and big champions of me. And our shelters are, I don't know about you in St. Louis, but our shelters are packed all the time. Um, so anything I can do to help um, get those dogs adopted and bring awareness to um, shelter pets of any kind, it's it's really important to me. Yeah, our, they're always pets. And it's yeah. so sad. Um, so I, I love the fact that you're doing that and, you know, showing people that, you know, whatever the dog is, like showing them in a different light uh, yeah. is so helpful because for whatever reason, you know, it's, it's underfunded and yeah. the shelters like are, you know, they just don't have the resources they need. So yeah. um, I love that. I wish more people would adopt. And that's how I, I tell a lot of people that want to get involved in animal photography. I got my start really getting that experience with dogs, volunteering at a local shelter, the Cleveland APL, where we got our first dog. And that gave me a lot of experience and taught me to be extremely patient because these are shelter dogs that many of them don't even know sit stay commands um so it's just kind of a chaotic it's a great way to get experience in a chaotic and kind of stressful environment and that's how i really developed my portfolio was even volunteering at as a photographer at local shelters those a good photo can go a long way instead of to help get a dog adopted over you know, the dog in a kennel, you know, looking terrified, for instance. Yeah. So what are your go-to setups for uh, a portrait of a dog? Are you crafting it based on the dog's character every time? Or you do, is it similar to like a headshot where you have like these three shots and I'm yeah. going to toss treats? I like to keep it simple. And sometimes the more stuff you have going on, the more maybe stressed uh, a dog can get. Plus, if I have a crazy dog or other type of animal, the more equipment I have all over the place, it just, it, it's not necessarily the best environment. So I often just have a key light and a background light, two lights set up, pretty simple, or sometimes two background lights, depending on, you know, if I'm doing like a white back, you know, high key setup or something like that. But yeah, I like to keep it simple. Um, just to not, you know, you need to move around a lot with these animals too. So having like a four, I've tried like three or four light setups and it's just, it also doesn't fit my style. I like those really solid, um, those solid headshot portraits are my favorite type of photo. Kind of humanizes the the animal. Um, so yeah, I keep it simple and uh, try to limit my editing too. I, I don't always like to do a lot of editing on the back end. I want to take the best photo I can straight out of the camera and uh, spend minimal time kind of working on it afterwards. Yeah. So if you have a dog that is not listening or maybe aggressive like yeah. what are your what are your tricks to get this dog to stay still and be a good boy yeah that's a good question uh, good boy <laughs> um well when at first off when a dog i mean dogs are usually the most challenging depending on dogs and cats are can be challenging to work with um versus some reptiles or other animals but i when they come into my studio we spend a good 15 minutes just playing getting to know each other treats toys i don't rush to the set. I don't rush to put them under the lights and shove a camera in their face. I think that's one of the worst things you can do. I, especially with dogs that maybe are straight out of a shelter. Um, so I like to hang out with them for a while, get them comfy. They're allowed on my furniture in my studio. Um, they have free roam. I tell people to unleash their dogs right away. And luckily my space smells like an animal. So I think they smell, they sense, I think dogs can read people. They know who oh, good yeah. people are. Um, and so treats, toys, I have owners bring toys that their dogs or cats already like from home. Treats, I have all that stuff, but I want them to feel like they're at home. Um, sometimes people bring their dog beds, you know. Um, but um, yeah, it's just a, a huge amount of patience, not forcing a dog to do something they don't want to do. You know, I'll refer to dogs, even though I photograph other animals but not forcing them to do something they don't want to do, giving them time. Um, you know, if they want to come back down from my platform, they can. If a dog's up there for like three seconds and I may, I get two or three shots off, great. It can come down, play with some toys, run around, do the zoomies, and then we go back up and try again. I, 
I think during an average 90 minute shoot, maybe I'm photographing there on the platform, maybe about 10 minutes total. But as you know, you can do a lot in 10 minutes with a good camera and good lighting. So, um, you know, now that I think about it, I haven't actually gotten the zoomies in probably like a decade. Yeah. <laughs> what like, I feel like, I, what happened to my zoomies? I don't want to zoom anymore. <laughs> it's quite, it's quite the opposite. So. Yeah. <laughs> So a lot of, a lot of patients though, I think dogs can read you too. If you're stressed, they're going to get stressed. I have to kick owners out and tell them to go sit down because they're getting stressed and, um, getting frustrated with their dogs. And I, that's like, those shoots are no fun. The dog's not having fun. I'm not having fun. The owner's not having fun. So I have to kick people out, you know, and just tell them to relax. Um, that yeah. I'm good. They don't see what I'm getting behind the camera. They see their dog get up there for a second or two and they think that's a bad thing, but I managed to get off a bunch of great shots in that two seconds, you know? Um, so I do spend a lot of time showing people photos that are getting stressed out. I let them look at my camera and, uh, and a lot of times that helps and they understand that I'm capturing good stuff. So, so are you approaching like fur kind of like skin are you trying to like perfect it and get out the imperfections or is it just like oh, i don't even have to deal with that what do you mean like when i'm editing or yeah like uh like frequency separation or just kind of like you know just like the yeah. detail that someone would have with like someone's skin of just like kind of no perfect. i you know i'm i what's the best way i can say it? again i focus so much on just getting great shots right out of the camera or doing a lot of soft lighting I try not to be too harsh. I use my umbrellas and, and, um, yeah, I don't really, I don't really worry about that. No one's ever asked me that question. It's a good question, but yeah, <laughs> again, I focus so I'll much. <laughs> What's that? It's the only one I'll have all day. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I just focus so much on, like I said, the front end. So, um, and, uh, you don't after... shoot their back end. What's that? You don't shoot their back end. No, sometimes <laughs> Cor corgis, corgis make good. Yeah, those loaves of bread. Yeah. So, of oh. Thanks for those guys. So when I do have a corgi in the studio, we actually do photograph their their butts. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. I mean, like looking back over the shoulder at you. Like... Oh, yeah. That's the best shot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, then, then, you know, once I'm on my computer, I'm maybe extending backgrounds, smoothing out backgrounds and editing out dirt, eye boogers, stuff like that. Other, you know, um, things that we don't want to show on camera if a dog's like, super excited or something um stuff like that so just minor edits yeah get the red rocket out of here yeah exactly get it out of i here. never I thought 10 years or 15 years ago if someone said i'd be editing you know that part of a dog one day on my computer for a living i'd, I'd laugh at them but uh yeah, yeah i do that i'd one. make it like twice as big and deliver yeah. that see what they said <laughs> so, <Dog. laughs> but yeah all right so let's get into your Instagram. Yeah. And uh, we're going to go through all of these photos because we can't just talk about it and not show it. Yeah. All right. All right. Here we go. So with everyone. All right. So follow the Greg Murray yeah. on Instagram. Are you this basically on every platform? Yeah, I'm just on Instagram and, and um, Facebook. Um, I get overwhelmed with all these options out there. Um, I know the, the Greg Murray and then just G Facebook.com slash G Murray photo. I can't, I mean, yeah, it's hard to keep up with everything. Oh, I know. All right. So the first one that looks, looks like the most recent one, it's a real, that's my dog, Leo. Oh, so. oh that's Leo. Yep. I love that. He's so like, the, he's a total rock star. I mean, it's amazing. He come. he's 11. I mean, I'm starting to get very emotional about his age, but uh, He's 11 years old and he comes in here and just sits up there for me. I mean, it's unbelievable. He's, he's been doing this for his whole life and he's, he's my go-to model. So he's in the studio? When no, you have other... no, I don't bring dogs in here. Um, okay. Cause I, you know, you never know. I, even in yeah. the back, I have a storage room and I don't want them barking. I mean, it could really, I've tried it and it doesn't work. Um, so yeah. I have no animals in here. Um, unless, unless I'm here by myself working editing i'll bring my dogs and so so every single day you come home smelling like a new dog how yeah. does he react oh yeah him and uh, our other dog kenzie they're they're all over me i think they've gotten used to it a bit um that's um 
wait, who is that? That's Walter. I photographed. So sometimes I, I'll do model calls for random animals. Um, like that's Walter. I have another, um, um, chameleon on my feed from a couple days ago named Zeppelin. I just like photographing different animals. And I just did a model call for people with chameleons in the Cleveland area. And I bring them in no charge, but it's a great way for me to up my portfolio, add to my licensing gallery. Um, I found out someone local had a pet raccoon this summer. I reached out to them. They came in and that raccoon was a hit. And a couple newspapers in Europe reached out to me to put those photos in their newspapers. So I love, I do a lot of, you know, people say don't do free shoots and whatever. They're free, but I, I love it. I get experience with other animals. I get to add to my licensing portfolio. I get to add to my main, you know, my website. I, yeah. do, I do it a lot and uh, it's great for me. Um, but I, I think it varies based on what type of photographer you're, you are. I mean, you're, it, I wouldn't say that's a free photo shoot because yeah. you're getting something I'm, super valuable, you know? Yeah, I'm getting a lot out of it. And, you know, I just love working with a lot of different types of animals. Yeah. Horses. Well, I, I got why isn't he blended into the background? Aren't they supposed to blend into their environment? Yeah, it, you know, they, they can, that. but it's a white backdrop. But yeah, <laughs> hey, no, no. no excuses. No excuses. Yeah. <laughs> no cheated. All right. And, you know, so, I love, we were talking uh, before. I love, you know, this was a paid client shoot cash, um, but I love pit bull type dogs are my favorite dogs to work with because they're super misunderstood and, if I had to pick one dog to work with for the rest of my career, it would be a pit bull type dog. I think they're just the best. And they are the sweetest. Yeah. When you when you really get to know and spend time with a lot of them, yeah. you're just like, oh my god, like completely misunderstood. Yeah. You know, I I tell Very everybody, impression. all dogs are individuals. So you do have you have, you do have dogs that have rough backgrounds and and do have behavioral issues, and um, but not all of them. And that goes for all types of breeds. Um, so you can't, I mean, I've learned with time, you, you can't uh, judge these dogs based on the way they look. Um, you know, I had a, had a pit bull in my studio a few minutes ago, um, right before we started um, to help get it adopted. I saw it a couple weeks ago at a local food truck park. I'm with my kids who are four and two years old. They're loving on this giant, looks kind of like this one white pity and you know i don't i trust that dog's handlers that they wouldn't bring it there if it did have issues and my kids are all over that dog you know this giant 60 pound burly pity and um i i just they're the best so i agree yeah no that's the same chameleon yeah a different one no that's a different one yeah well it looks quite a bit smaller yeah, very very painful right there but yeah, i thought it it, looks... I, I thought it'd be and... funny <laughs> Oh, he's probably going up there so he can finally blend in. I know. Yeah, look at that. It was not intentional, but that's a hat I wore. <laughs> All right. Horses in the studio. That's What's yeah, that? that I do take. Um, I took a backdrop on site. So um, I've always photographed horses. But last year or this past year, this summer, I really got into equine photography. I love horses. Um, so I've done a lot of equine work. Um, I'm building up my portfolio and doing a lot more of that the past uh, six months or so. But yeah, that's like a cloth, a white cloth backdrop. Um, most of these shots, um, I have a, a lot on my website, but um, natural light. Um, I do use some flash at times, but um, black backdrop portraits for horses are really popular. And I just, I'm obsessed with these white or light gray backdrops. I think they just pop off of it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm getting more into equine photography. Um, I love horses and I'm not going to lie. The money is phenomenal. Um, yeah. you got money for a horse. You got money for photography. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've worked with people that pay six figures for their horses and have them flown here from Europe. So the money in equine photography is phenomenal, but of course I love it. And, uh, it's a blast. And did you give this little perm to? to no, him? no. Yeah. Is that, oh yeah. No, come that way? That's a Philly. So I, I'm, that's a young, like 10 month old horse. So they're kind of a little more all over the place with their hair. Yeah. Yep. 
It's like teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at. Yeah. You know, oh, I'm yeah. obsessed with white dogs against, you know, a, a white, light gray. I, I just love the contrast of their, the nose. I mean, this, this is a perfect dog. Um, that how, nose. Much weed, how much weed did this dog smoke before yeah. the shoot? I mean, <laughs> and that's a great on. thing. No, I'm glad you made that comment. Not because of the weed part, I guess, but um, I take, so during an average shoot in my studio, someone's maybe here 90 minutes. I take like, gosh, I might take two to 300 photos because I'm always waiting for that super funny shot or super unique shot. And this is one of those, like I greeting card companies reach out to me to buy my photos. Like this is one of those photos that some of the greeting card, greeting card company in the future might buy from me. Um, I love the unique as much as I love a dog looking straight at me and you get that feeling from their eyes, like funny photos like this are great too. And I love these and my clients love these. Um, but I'm always taking photos cause I never know what I'm going to get. Um, yeah. So I would imagine if you're shooting pretty quickly, you have lights that have a really fast recycle time. Oh yeah. I mean, I have pro photo D two 1000s. Um, yeah. I learned, you know, yeah, I mean, they have the freeze mode, you know, I, I learned early on making a lot of mistakes by not buying good gear. And I, I think a lot of photographers do that. You also don't have the money. Um, and you're buying sub lights that aren't good for what I do. Um, and then, you know, years ago, five or six years ago, I'm like, I just got to go all out and get some of the best lighting there is. And, and it really works well for me. I've always, you know, I'm not doing a commercial for them. I just, I love pro photos. Yeah. Great, great lighting. Have you been following the new Sony that has a global shutter? Yeah. Um, I have. Yeah, I know. So that's pretty crazy now that you can kind of almost have any light. Yeah. And I, I'll be honest, like I, I didn't, I had to look up, not afraid to admit this. I had to look up what global shutter is. Um, yeah. I'm self-taught. There are still so many things I don't know. And I didn't, I didn't know what it was. So I had to look it up. It's pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm self-taught looking at videos on your website, um, YouTube and things like that. That's how I learn. And it's kind of funny. Sometimes people will talk to me and ask me very um, kind of in the weeds, technical questions. And I'm not always great with it. I just know how to use my camera, know what settings to use. And um, I'm learning literally every week. I try to learn new things because there's, yeah. so, I mean, as you know, there's so much. It's, it's, I mean, it can be stressful. <laughs> photography is so, I, I've often found that the people that know the most about the technical side, like what is the circle of confusion, stuff like that. They're oftentimes like the least creative or have yeah. like the, the least best portfolio. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not always the case, but oh, no. the I know what you mean. That really don't care. And like, they're just out there shooting because they love it. And like, they don't get caught up on all the rules of composition. Like, yeah. You yeah, only I, need to know so much. I, I know how to shoot manual. I, pretty good with studio lighting. I'm always trying to do, I'm more focused on learning to become better with off camera flash than I am learning the ins and outs of my camera. Um, I just, I focus on that, those two things and it's worked out very well for me. So <laughs> well, look at all these. So the first one here was the, uh, that trash panda. Oh yeah. You got it there. Yeah. yeah. Starling, the trash panda. Amazing. Yeah. I, I probably have a full longer it's video. Very, of it. Oh, I almost yeah. got it back. Yeah, if you scroll down, I have like a more full, um, uh, reel dedicated to Starling, the uh, trash panda, as you call it. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's a wild. It's funny. It's a wild animal, um, and it acts like a wild animal in the studio. Um, so this person just has it in there. Yeah, there. I think. Is, yeah. Is that a video? Yeah. So. That how this person just has it as a pet? Yeah, yeah. It, it's if you look, it's one of those. It's not a common pet, but they're around. And yeah, she's like a very well respected lawyer here in the Cleveland area, and uh, she has a, takes it shopping with her, takes it for walks on the what? beach. And I saw her on a big Cleveland account on Instagram, and immediately found out who she was and invited her in here. 
And I mean, who can say they photographed a raccoon? Um, right. So this thing does, does it know how to like, does it sit when you say sit or is it just? No, yeah. I mean, as you saw, I think in some of the video, it's on a, we did leash it to kind of keep it in place. And then obviously it's very easy to Photoshop on a leash. Um, but a lot of times, speaking of leashes, a lot of the animals, it helps them sometimes stay in place when they're on a leash. They think they're on a walk or, you know, the owner's more in charge. So a lot of the animals I photograph dogs, they have leashes that I edit out. Um, depending on their collar and the way it looks, we'll edit that out too. There I have a duck. Um, yep. Iguana. Um, so yeah. Where, um, is this someone's pet duck? Yeah, believe it or not. <laughs> that is not a wild that? duck. That is someone's pet. I, I, if I remember correctly, it was injured and they took it in and it, it lives uh, in so their the house. Wings yeah. are probably clipped or does it? Yeah, just that's have a good question. I think they probably are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, any chance I can get to get a, a why, you know, non cat or dog in my studio, I'll take it. And, uh, I've really focused the past year on getting those unique animals and unique pets in my studio. And it's good for my business. I get noticed more, you know, when people see a raccoon, a video of nice photos of raccoon, of a raccoon, they, they notice it and they share it. And so that type of thing helps me as a photographer an animal photographer getting those unique animals in there yeah and these horses are yeah there yeah and that's the same thing that's a a lot of people a lot of equine photographers will photograph horses at the entrance of a barn and um, photoshop in the black behind it which is pretty easy to do i mean it's very easy to do i guess but again i i try to it saves me a little time i do have to set up but i have a black a westcott what it's called but a large i think eight by ten black um <clears throat> cloth behind the yeah. yeah that's just easy to travel with I, I it's like a blanket and um it limits the amount of editing i have to do saves me time love that yeah oh i mean you get to just have puppies be brought to you all day long yeah 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 all i know I know sometimes when people like you're talking to me, I forget how lucky I am to work with these animals and, um, a possum. Right, is this a possum? Or yeah, there you go. yeah. I, I, I reached out to the, again, this is one of those things that I didn't get paid for, <laughs> but I, I reached out to the local, the Cleveland museum of natural history and they have a wildlife center. And I said, Hey, I want to photograph your animals and we can do like a little trade or something. You can share some stuff. And now I have an owl, if you keep scrolling, I've always wanted to photograph an owl. You know, I have all these like cool animals that I've gotten to work with that um, if I just sat at my computer, no one would have reached out to me saying, can you photograph an opossum, you know, or an owl. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. I have to, I have to reach out and get a lot of that. And uh, what a, you want to know what I learned? I think maybe two years ago. Yeah. That opossum, they live in the United States, but a uh, possum there in Australia. I did not know that. See, sometimes I say possum, sometimes I say a possum. So there you go. I was bummed to learn they only live like a couple of years too. They're just, they're oh, really, really cool. Yeah. This thing looks like it's 17 years old. I know. Really? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's cool. I learn a lot too about animals. I, I have a client who rescues um, squirrels. So anytime she rescues a, a squirrel, she brings them in here. Um, again, another, a shoot that I don't get paid for. But when I do shoots like this, I do them right before or after a shoot I'm already having in the studio. So it limits the extra time I'm spending with on setup and getting everything ready. Um, but yeah, so I photograph squirrels a lot, really cool animals to work with. Um, but yeah, owl, I've always, owls are just beautiful animals. Were you, all right, be honest, were you working on your owl call before this owl got there? Oh yeah, of course. Well, I'm always, I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old at home, so we're always working on our animal calls. But yeah. You want to you wanna let us hear your owl call? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yours? You put me on the spot. I would say, I would say along the lines of, woo, yeah, the, woo. yeah, Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah? That's better. I know. So I've got... <laughs> There's like three owls in my neighborhood. Oh, okay. And as, uh, especially like late at night, is really the only time you can like basically talk to them. Yeah. But they'll, sure. they'll respond back. Yeah. Which yeah. Is great. Yeah. So good on them. Yeah. 
the detail. So what uh, what camera are you shooting on? This detail's pretty Canon um um 5R. Right? Nice. Yeah. Um I also have a Fuji. Sometimes I use it. I have a Fuji GFX 100S, 100 meg. I mean, it's like insane, 100 megapixel. Like, but that's not ideal. That it's kind of funny. It, that's like a very big landscape uh, um, camera. <laughs> um, it's not a animal <laughs> camera really. But when I'm outdoors a lot, I'll use that. Um, when I have like a a owner and their dog, you know, posed against a building, I love to use that camera. 35 millimeter lens, you know, stuff like that. So I, it's kind of a, a very expensive toy, I guess that Fuji yeah. is. Yep. That's so this, oh, yeah, glass. yeah. Yeah. There's a guy and I, uh, this is a more common shot nowadays amongst animal photographers. Um, it's glass. I have a, I have one light right by my head. I'm laying down on the ground and, uh, I forget his name guy in Europe got really big on that about five or six years ago, got kind of went viral for doing this and it's a fun shot. Um, so yeah, once in a while, depending on the dog, small dogs, I think I have like a, it's like a four by six piece of glass. Um, very easy shot, uh, to do actually. Love that. One. There what you go. Is... Por Porcupine. That's another museum, natural history museum shot. Um, oh. yeah, really cool animal. Looks like he's, what is he thinking about? You yeah, think? he's eat, he's eating right now, but yeah, he's there. You go, <laughs> man. Yeah, very does it cool. actually? Yeah, uh, are all the like spikes in the back, or does he? Yeah, most have... of them are kind of on the back, but you can see some the light colored ones. But yeah, I mean, I couldn't touch him obviously, but you know, he's oh, he's yeah. used to being he's a rescue, used to being around people, um, so pretty easy to to work with. Um, Oh, this looks like Bob from accounting. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So do you think uh, dog owners look like their dogs? No. Um, you know that. Have you seen that photo series? No. There's someone, a, yeah. did someone did it. I mean, I think they did some grooming of the owners Maybe that and, is where I said that. Yeah, and dogs, but there is a series and it's phenomenal of people that look like their dogs. Um, so yeah. Oh yeah, there's the owl again, but uh, full body. Is this is one of those tiny ones. Yeah, yeah, aren't they amazing? They're only they only weigh like two pounds. It's all it's all feathers. Um, but yeah, one light setup, white backdrop. Um, Looks like like a, using like an octobox or an umbrella. Yeah, I just use an umbrella. Yeah, what is it? I think uh, my a four foot four foot umbrella, most common, soft. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, so glasses can't be easy to put on a dog. Is this dog? No, just yeah, this dog. This dog's actually. There are some dogs that are just easy. My dog Leo. I've had him wear those same glasses. Um, there are some dogs that are just don't mind wearing stuff, and I I don't like to get all. What's the right word? If someone comes into my studio with a bunch of tutus for their dog, it's called the Ann Gettys effect. Yeah, I. <laughs> that's not my style. <laughs> um, so I like glasses. Yeah. I, I like hats. Um, I don't, I'm not big on outfits and stuff like that. Um, you know, sometimes I'll still do it, but I won't share it online. Um, but I, I like the simple things, the hats, the, the glasses, I think dogs and sunglasses. I think that's cool. You know, here's, there's another one down there. Um, oh yeah. yeah. Look at this. This is a Dane, great game. Dane's notoriously difficult dog to photograph. I they bet. got a lot of high energy. They tend to be a little more nervous. German short-haired pointers, uh, Vishlas. They can be really, there are some breeds that when I know they're coming in, I know it's going to be a lot of work. So you get like, do you get extra like treats? Extra yeah, delicious? I mean, I'm just, like I said, I'm super patient. They might not get as many photos with those shoots. Um, and I let them know that, but, you know, I'm, it's quality over quantity so some shoots yeah. we get a lot more photos than others and that's okay oh yeah these dogs yep that's he's my, just, that's my he's dog leo just... he's a model yeah. leo gets it <laughs> leo gets it what's been your like most memorable shoot if there is one yeah you know i'm a great question i was working on so i have 
um, I have four books published through a publisher and, um, is it my second book was a, uh, um, called Pipple Heroes, 49 Underdogs with Resilience and Heart. And, um, I traveled the country photographing 49 different Pipple type dogs with unique stories. And I had always wanted to photograph a dog rescued from Michael Vick's property in 2007. And I, I don't know how old you are, but I'm guessing you know about that. Yep. Yeah. Um, I do have people in my studio nowadays. They're like, what are you talking about? Michael Vick, Pitbulls? Um, but yeah, 2007, obviously a bunch of, he was running a dog fighting operation with Pitbull type dogs. And uh, it was my dream to, to meet one of them. And I went out to Utah to Best Friends Animal Society. This one named Meryl, who's in my uh, Pitbull book, um, was the judge ordered that she had to stay at this um, sanctuary for the rest of her life. Great dog, you know. Um, and I mean, the photos aren't extraordinary. They're not a studio environment. It's just Meryl hanging out there on the, um, on the property of the sanctuary. But just to be in the presence of a dog that went through, yeah, there's the book, um, went through so much hell um meant a lot to me to be to see that dog um living a good life um and to photograph it i mean it, it meant the world to me um so yeah nothing extraordinary about the shoot i guess um simple photos but uh it's a, it's a great story yeah yeah so so um, how do you go about publishing a book you have a publisher you self publishing yeah i know i'm glad you asked i so in 2017 I was prepared to self-publish a book. I started doing a series of dogs eating peanut butter just as oh, a fun, yeah. uh, again, nothing special in the photos. When I look back at them, you know, I think a lot of photographers are their own worst critic. And I look back, that's my first studio. I had one light. I didn't know what I was doing, but I made this book and I was going to self-publish. The photos went viral. Um, I was all over people.com, today.com, I, I, everywhere around the world were featuring these just dogs eating peanut butter, making funny faces. And a publisher happened to be searching Kickstarter where I was, you know, trying to get some money to make the book. And they reached out to me and probably within a few weeks, I signed a contract and I have an amazing publisher there out of Utah, Gib Smith. Um, they're really great mid-sized publisher and every few years we come up with a new idea and do a new book. Um, I propose my ideas and, you know, they can say that's a great idea or we don't think that's a great idea. Here's why. Um, and I just came out with my fourth book and prior to my fourth book coming out, I think I've sold over 30,000 copies of my other books around the world. Um, I never thought I'd be doing it. Um, it's a great the marketing value of having books and being featured in the news on today.com on a full page and people.com. Like the marketing value of that is crazy. Yeah. The financial aspect of these books, you know, I'm not Stephen King, you know, like I thought I was going to be rich. It's kind of a funny story. I thought I was going to make all this money. <laughs> I mean, I make pennies to the dollar off of each book, but again, it's so much fun to get these books out here knowing that people are laughing and smiling and that I'm maybe making a difference in their day. Um, well, my, you're about to get 30,000 and yeah, one. Book, yeah. so. <laughs> my my Pitbull book is a, very educational. It tells people how to get rid of Pitbull bands in the cities they live in. I have a whole section on that. Um, we had a Pitbull band where I lived and where I currently live in Lakewood and and it details the story of how we spent, you know, close to a year getting our city to get rid of that ban. Um, so knowing yeah. that that book is an educational resource and hopefully can change some people's minds also uh, means the world to me. So again, financially, um, I don't make a lot of money from those, but the marketing and just knowing that I'm making people smile around the world is probably one of the coolest feelings, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to have, I mean, I've learned a lot about publishing, right? And, yeah. you know, working with, you know, instructors like yourself and making courses and then selling them. Yeah. There is so much that goes into uh, just the marketing and the, the sales of a, a, a book, yeah. even if it's like a digital version of our tutorials, that it is more of a marketing tool. And yeah. a lot of 
photographers that work with us want to do it just because it's a great marketing tool. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. That you have this course, you're a subject matter expert. Um, yeah. So I love that. Um, I love yeah. the fact that you have, and you're doing like good with these books too. So that's, yeah, that's amazing. important to me. Very important. So do you put your paw print instead of signing? You just like put your handprint in the book? <laughs> I do. When I do book release parties, sometimes dogs from the books come and they will do paw print signatures, but it's, it's pretty cool actually. So so you you must have tried like the super creamy or like the extra chunky, which, which is the peanut butter that the dogs make the good photos on? Yeah, the, the super creamy is the best. Super yeah. creamy. Is that just because yep. it gets everywhere? Well, nuts, and I, yeah, I don't know about the nuts. My, I've never even tried that one. Good question. Really? The cream. Yeah, you the just creamy. Went right to creamy, and that, that was yeah. it. That was it. Messy. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's a good thing. Maybe I'll have to try that sometime. You know, um, you should pitch this book as your next idea. It's kind of more on the risque, but yeah. it's a fetish book for the feet people. You put peanut butter on toes and have the dogs lick, lick it off the there toes. There you go. That would be pretty weird. Or people that um, love feet stuff would probably <laughs> pick it up. Yeah, there might be an audience for that. <laughs> it would have to be an animal dog lover, which most people are, and into foot stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Some weird <laughs> stuff out there. <laughs> told you might be like, all right, we're done working with Greg. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, you know, speaking of peanut butter, real, this just happened the other day, so I want to bring it up. Like, you know, those photos, I have it in my contract. I can still license those photos. And a marketing agency reached out to me last week, and they're working with a dog tree toy company that's coming out with a new peanut butter product and they found my photos through an article online and now they want to buy and put who knows six photos on their um, packaging so it's just another kind of cool thing that comes out of those other projects where again financially it's maybe not the best thing but back end a lot of cool things can happen getting in the news and then licensing yeah. those photos and you know i'm working and negotiating a contract right now for those and it's just that it's fun making money off of stuff you've already done and oh, just residual income is the best yeah. kind of income. oh yeah it's great and i get a check for my books Love every two years and it's i don't count on it and it may not be a lot but it's always fun to get it in the mail you know um the you know it's great <laughs> so with advances in technology and generative AI and mid journey and all of that mid journey is pretty good at making animal photos. Yeah. Uh, how do you think this is going to affect, uh, like that side, like of the commercial side of your business? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think it will. I, I'm glad you brought that up. Cause when that, when, what month was that where that blew up? Was that like March or something? I feel like, I, I mean, I it, it's been about a year since like yeah. the virgin whatever came out when it was like this is wild and it was still really bad yeah but i mean I, every couple months there's been this like new yeah. i feel like in the spring it really really yeah i don't know what happened but the, you know access to mid journey and, and i even joined mid journey and yeah you know i think it will have an impact i already see people news websites especially um using those photos you know I'm still doing well with licensing. I'm still, nothing has changed from licensing. In fact, I've had a good year. Um, I, I think it will impact. I, I don't know how much yet. Does it make me a little nervous? A lot less so that I like, I got pretty like nervous last spring. Again, I don't know what happened. Maybe I just started seeing more on it, but yeah, it's hard to say. I think it's going to impact some people more than others, um, depending on their type of work. Luckily, a lot of my work is just people coming in, hiring me. Um, and Mid Journey or any of those other sites aren't going to, yeah, make, it'll never, you know, like that won't impact. Um, and again, I'm still, I'm, I'm still making money from licensing, and we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I thought I knew you were going to ask about that. I mean, it's such a big thing right now, um, and it's interesting to see people coming off like their real photo, you know, like there's so many interesting people winning competitions and, you know, they got to yep. figure out those contests now, how they're going to, you know, the raw file, you know, I think they're we're sending those in now, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I'm sure it's impacted me a bit. We'll see what happens, you know, but again, a lot of my business is people coming in and doing my books and, you know. I didn't think it was going to affect like the headshot, but now I'm seeing apps where like you upload six photos of yourself and then like it's making like 
10 photos like lifestyle headshot and it's like yeah you use a shot that's not really you to like yeah. represent like come on yeah I hope, I hope that stops i think yeah i think that people will realize the importance and the value of having real photos but again you're gonna have like our local cleveland.com website i could see them using it but that's like a local website they want to save money you know i i get it um they're going to make their own photo. And then there's all the legal aspects. I mean, I haven't read much lately, but it, you know, people are using my photos, your photos, other people's photos to make. So it'll be yeah. interesting. I haven't really been paying attention to that lately, but it'll be interesting to see how that works. I, I think maybe some companies don't want to even use those yet because of if there's legal issues. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, I've been so I've been I'm going to be coming out with a whole series on this and I've been talking with um, well, it's my legal team, but also like they're pretty much one of the best like copyright, um, yeah. you know, set of lawyers. And be, like a lot of these like mid journeys, because that information isn't actually like stored somewhere in the way that, you know, this learns from something. There's yeah almost no way to prove it. Exactly. No, so, you're like, right. There is no way to prove it. Yeah. Um, and it's so like, you know, they're basically saying that it's going to take 10 years for like major laws to, to be in, you know, implemented. Yeah. So it's basically, it's going to be the wild, wild west for a while. Of yeah. Like, you know, luckily there's already some, you know, I know this because I came from food photography, but there are laws in place for commercial advertising of like, it has to actually be real food and yeah. the exact portions of that food. Correct. Yeah. There you go. Be... Yeah. So I wonder if it is stuff like that's going to be the same for like, you know, fashion photography, like, you know, the, the clothes, do they have to be real? And can yeah. you like swap yeah. out the person or like, already, I mean, they're already doing that. I think, I think, you know, I, I mean, it's, oh, there's so many, yeah, there's so many lawsuits already. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry. I don't want to, I stressed about it this spring for a couple of weeks and I'm like, I just wasted my time getting stressed. I'm going to focus on being the best I can be doing other things. And, you know, you can't replace a photo of a real photo of a person out there in downtown or by the lake. You can't replace, you know, you, you can't fake a dog, you know, I think yeah. they have a lot of value. And luckily in my, what I'm doing, people hiring me, um, it's not going to impact me, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. So what advice do you have for people that want to, you know, become an animal photographer? Like, don't do it. It's all mine. Or yeah, I something else. Yeah. <laughs> don't um, do it. Isn't it? Yeah. If you're not patient, don't do it because you're going to be miserable. Um, get experience. I, I always tell people that want to get involved, go to your local shelter and get experience, build your portfolio. You can take studio equipment to a shelter. You can just go out into the the courtyard at the local shelter and get experience, um, build your portfolio. Um, do those again. I do those free shoots, find some animals that look awesome. Go walk downtown or by the lake and take some pictures of some animals to get your portfolio going. Um, study SEO, build a great website. There's some terrible, terrible websites out there that are stuck in 1998. Um, and it's so bizarre to me that people, I, I can't imagine they make a living with those web. I mean, have a good website. It's so easy now. I mean, you know this. It's so easy to have a good yeah. web. I mean, it's dragon, dragon place, you know. Um, so a good website, volunteering at your local shelter, lots of patience. You know, I spent 10 years in corporate HR. I learned how to have really good customer service skills. You have to like, I'm sure you might know some people. You have to work well with people. You can be a great photographer when people don't like you or you're a snob. Um, you're not so going to you be canceled pretty quick these days. What's that? <laughs> you get canceled pretty quick. Yeah. These yeah. Days. But you know, you, you know this, like you have to be a nice person. It may sound like silly advice, of course, but you have to be nice. You have to know how to work with people. You have to know how to run a business. You know, like you can be a great photographer, a great artist. If you don't know how to market yourself, um, you're in trouble. Well, a lot of my job is probably 80% of what I do is marketing myself. I'm on Instagram. I'm doing reels. I'm trying to do better reels all the time. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's so much more than 
understanding how to work a camera so much more than that. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, what we try to teach at ProEDU with the variety of courses that yeah. we have. And like, you know, when we do a, a tutorial with, you know, people like yourself, we don't just do the photography. We try to understand how they're getting clients. Yeah. You know, what's your marketing like? Um, how are you pricing yourself? And we try to build all of that into um, these courses because, you know, it, photographers are siloed and like a lot of them are, you know, they learn from a few courses online. And then outside of that, there's not a lot of mentoring happening. Yeah, uh, yeah you're right. So it's kind of a, a free for all for the knowledge that for, you know, up until eight to 10 years ago, it was really kept secret by oh, yeah. the older generation of photographers. Like they didn't share it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And a lot of them still don't want to because they feel like they have this like hidden secret of like how I do what I do and I don't want to share it, which is. Yeah, it, I, you know, I've thought about that before. Um, like it, it's hard. Do you want to create? I'd rather do a national tutorial, to be honest with you, than a local tutorial. But then again, being that subject matter expert is a great thing. And it's balancing like it is a good thing to teach, I think all in all. Um, but I've gotten nervous before. I'm like, do I want to teach a bunch of people in Cleveland to be pet photographers? But, you know, I got to have faith in myself as a photographer. And yeah, I, I think it's great to teach other people and get other people experience and, you know, so. I love it. Well, I really appreciate your time. It was great yeah. chatting and, and looking through your portfolio and uh, I might bring my dog up for a shoot. Yeah. I don't know. I have people that, you know, I, I can't believe it to this day. I have people that travel from far to come here and a couple a year will, you know, some people come from Minnesota oh. or Tennessee and it's like crazy to me still, you know, I, I, I think I, what do they call it? Imposter syndrome. Sometimes I, sometimes I just can't believe it, you know? Um, yeah. I'm like, when's someone going to catch on to me? <laughs> you know, it, it's hard sometimes. You're just like, why are people doing this? Why are people spending this much on me? But, um, you know, I just got to get better and believe in myself. So, <laughs> Well, we believe in you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you ever grow up watching Bob Barker and The Price is Right? Oh, all the time. Do you know, do you remember how he ended it? Yeah, Spay and Neuter. Yeah, Spay and Neuter. Right, give, give us a good, give us a good yeah. ending. Yeah. Oh, oh, the ex oh God! You're putting me on the spot. Yeah, you know, of course. just just remember, spay and neuter your pets. Wish I had a there little. There Wish I had Simple. a little microphone. Simple. <laughs> Don't yeah. do Michael Vick uh, pitbull yeah. ring. That too. Yeah, are we done? <laughs> are we still recording? Still recording, but now we are oh. going out. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching, and we will talk to you. <laughs> podcast is officially over. See you next time. Catch you a little later on down the trail, dude. Thanks for listening. I get out of here and start shooting. I can remember very distinctly one of the very first classes. You had to take um, one roll of film and, and tell a story. And you got, you know, four by six prints made of them and you put them on the wall. I remember watching some of the people's images go up on the board and being like, Oh my God, what did I get myself into? These people are so talented. I was a DJ, I worked a lot at night, sort of felt that itch to do something else. And after some soul searching, the only thing that I was excited about doing was taking pictures. And I, I would Photoshop myself into other places. And a lot of times it never even went online. I didn't care because it wasn't for necessarily the world. It was because I wished I was anywhere other than where I was. I suppose academically I failed everything, so I was left with very few choices. Uh, I was cater waitering. I'd work till you know 11, 12 o'clock at night, retouch until three or four in the morning. Even though I didn't really have the talent, I'd be willing to work when other people would sleep. And at times I look at my work and I think, damn, I'm a shitty photographer. Fuck, it's nothing. You know, you have this idea of what can be done because you're assisting, and you just can't. Created. You know, so often today's artists, I think we get ideas and we end up sitting on them and we don't follow through. I think we're our, we can be our worst enemies. I will talk myself out of a project before I even begin it 
because I think about all the things that might go wrong or could go wrong. When you first start out with doing anything, you know, you've got like five people, you know, one of those is your mum following you and it's just it's difficult to get accurate feedback. You have to be willing to be rejected by the artwork, by yourself, by your peers. We get worried what our peers are going to think. We get worried what the talent is going to think or what the celebrity is going to think. And for me it was always like, I understand that, but I also understand that you have to be passionate enough to throw the excuses aside and just start the process. First struggling, then assisting full-time for three years, then struggling some more, then retouching, freelancing, getting my first job. But I'll lay in bed and something will just pop in my head and I just go, what if? Wouldn't it be interesting if? Try it, it didn't work, throw it out. Try it, it didn't work, throw it out. Try it, it works, it works, it doesn't work, throw it out. You know, you don't become a great photographer, you don't become a great painter, you don't become a great sculptor without having some downfalls and, and, and going in the wrong direction. I allow myself to fail because I like to fail because I like to grow. But you have to decide that you want it because it's not easy to be great at anything. Even though I'm not at the place I want to be, I'm still moving forward. Nobody's going to love everything that we do. But I think you have to take a chance.